of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the trap which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. My cup, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Somebody ought to say, Amen. Amen. Bless you. You may be seated in the place. The family hour has come and and gone. We're going to move right into the homegoing service of Vincent Courtney Wilson. And bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, first of all, for being here. Stand on our feet, everybody but the family, and we're going to sing a hymn. Grab a hymn book if you can, because if you don't, I'll make up the words. <laughs> we're going to send what, what a friend we have in Jesus. Come on, stand with me. Page 61 in your hymn books. Page 61 in your hymn books. Uh, what a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to have. God in 
Amen. You may be seated in the place. You may be seated in the place. They are handing out right now your obituaries or your programs. In our Old Testament scripture, Turn with me, if you would, to Ecclesiastes, third chapter, verses 1 through 8. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. When you got it, say, I got it. Ain't nobody got it. Ain't, y'all looking at me like, uh, I don't even know where that book is. It's in the Old Testament. You got it, Sister Cobb? Well, we're going to go on because Sister Cobb got it. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Ninth verse, what profit hath he that worketh in the wherein he laboreth? Somebody ought to say, amen. Amen. Our New Testament scripture will be read by Reverend Kevin Thompson. Prayer by Dr. Calvert Porter. And a selection, precious Lord, take my hand. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, yeah. the truth, and the life. Right. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I read John 14, verses 1 through 6. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Bless you. Bless you. Our dear precious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, first of all, thanking you for being God and being God all by yourself. We certainly recognize your sovereignty. We recognize your wisdom in all things. Certainly, Father, we do not understand all your ways, Father, but we trust in you. 
Father, as we come together this morning to, to memorialize Vincent Wilson, I pray, Father, that you would comfort each and every family member this morning that's in attendance today. Certainly each and every one of them have their own stored up memories for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that you will allow them to cry their tears, Father, because that's why you gave them to them. Father, I pray that they will continue to recognize that their, 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 their tears and, their, and they're missing him is, is, is only the sweet pain of having loved him all these years. Father, we thank you because we know that you are good all the time, yeah. whether in life or in death. You are good. And so as we go forth this morning, Father, we, we just pray, Father, that all that's said and done, Father, will ultimately be for your glory. But as we memorialize Vincent, Father, I, I just pray that someone will be encouraged, someone will be blessed to live a life, Father, that will be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in the place. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I am weak, I am worn, but through the Storm through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on. When my way grows me, precious Lord, linger me. When my life is all Did not, I did not plan to sing. And I really started to call Celindy up here to, to sing that song. Because I know she got it. And I know she knows how to sing. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Can I get can I get some programs for the preacher? We have come to a moment when I know somebody out there has something to say. I'm going to do something I don't like to do. 
I'm going to ask if you got something to say. Because I don't like to open it up. Folk don't now always know what to say when they get up here. But you got two minutes to do it. And I'm that guy. I'm the guy that cuts the mic. I'm the guy that does like this. I'm the guy that says, amen, 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 goodbye. So if you got something you want to say in, in honor of Vince, we ask that you do it at this time. Come to that microphone right there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am Vince's evening supervisor at Bayview on the transport escort side. My fondest memory of Vince is just as recent. And I, he came and told me the news. Um, heck, can my team stand up? Um, when he came and broke us the news, I asked him, I said, do you want me to pull you off the schedule? He said, no, Nisi Poo, I'm going to wear this out. And that's exactly what he did. When I was sick, he brought me anything that I needed to make sure I got well, mm -hmm. not even realizing how he was, how sick he was. And those were the fondest memories I have of Vince. May the Lord be a blessing to the family. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. those who don't know, Vince is like a brother to me. It's like five or six of us guys that grew up together. We've been friends for over 50 years. 50 years. Vincent was the first one to go home. I might not come across like I really want to, but this is tough. <coughs> you know, Vince had many names, you know, Vito, Vegas, Vincent. You know, some of us know, you know, and he was very special to us, you know. Yeah. Even though he got on our nerves, we got on his. Yeah. But that was Vito. Um, I just want to tell the fellas, you know, I love y'all, man. We're going to get through this one. And um, Vincent, love you, baby. Bless you. Bless you, bless you. Morning, everybody. Um, Morning. It was a joyful moment for me um, to know that uh, Vince was saved. Yeah, yeah. He gave his life to Christ. Um, I had got that call, and uh, I was talking to him on the phone, and I was able to pray with him. And uh, I asked him, uh, did he have a plan of salvation? Vince knew. Like, yeah, I already did that. I said, could we pray? And he did. And we did. So I, I'm thankful for that. I thank God for his love. Bless you. Appreciate you. Reverend Dr. Calvert Porter is going to come uh, and represent Hopkins Elder Plus. Um, I didn't see anybody over there moving. Is that Pat? Okay, come on. You talking, Pat? Lord have mercy. What you don't want to do, what you don't want to do is you don't want to go home and say what I should have said. You don't want to do that. So if you're thinking about saying something, if you got it in your mind to say something, this is the time to do it, especially if you don't hang around these folk all that often. Go ahead, Pat. Oh, my God. I had went to EJ, and I asked him, I said, did Vince quit? And he told me, no, he's just on vacation. 
And then maybe like a week later, Vince came back to work. And I went to him, I said, I'm so glad to see you. And he never said anything to us that he was sick. But EJ knew, but he couldn't tell us. I'm just going to miss that pretty smile. Oh, God. He was so good with the participants. And, you know, some people at the job had came to me when he first came and expressed how they feel. I say, that's your feelings. I need to find out mine. And like I said, that smile will knock you out. He was a wonderful person. I saw him one day in the store, and he t the person he was with, he said, was his sister. And so I said, we standing in line. He said, you good? I said, yeah, I'm good. He said, I was going to pay for your stuff. I said, I'm good this time, but never know about the next time, but I thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. the type of person he yeah. was. Yeah. He will be missed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Mr. Cornish, you get ready to say something? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh. Dear family and friends, my name is Deacon Cornish. I really miss Vince. Vince drove the truck three days a week that I was on. And he said to the newcomer, I will teach you. He taught us, he taught him how to strap down us in the wheelchair. Vince was a good man. When I heard him, was sick, I prayed. Yeah. And somebody came and told me he had passed away. I said, what? The whole building probably would hurt me because I was so shocked. But you know what? He suffers no more. He is home with the Father now. Yeah. That's what I have to say. In Jesus' name. Bless you, sir. Amen. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I just love Vince so much. He just showed me so much love. And this jacket I have on has Vince. <laughs> I can't even say the last name. I used to just say, Vince, this is the jacket you made for me. And so I wore it today because I love Vince. I didn't even know he was sick. He, he was so jolly and so outgoing and so loving to us participants. I'm, I, I tell you, I just can't say enough to the family. We're going to miss Vince because he was a kind, loving person to us participants. I love Vince, and I'm sorry that, that I didn't even get a chance to say anything to him because I did not know he was ill. So you all have my prayers, the strength to, be, to keep you all um, and through this uh, hard time. And... God will take us through, because God will take us through anything. So I just pray for y'all and keep y'all in my prayers. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my and soul. all that's within me. Bless his holy name. To be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. Vince was a person full of joy, full of laugh, that loved. Alex, Tim, family, 
I know you will remember his love, his joy. He can't think about Vince without thinking about his laughter. God gave him a peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding because his heart was filled with joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. I pray that you will find comfort in knowing that he is with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, Vince, Vince Wilson. That's my brother from another mother. Uh -huh. um, Vince and Mark Ford is my oldest friends in life. They brothers to me. Um, I knew them better than I knew my own blood brothers. They stayed in jail a lot. Me and Vince, me, Tim, Alex. We, we, we strong. We love each other very much. Um, to the point today, I had to choose between my living sister to go see her at her party, or my brother who passed. I'll get to see my sister tomorrow, but my brother, I'm gonna see him off today. Yeah. Where yeah. he doesn't get in the way. Yes, sir. To the point, if I had to lose a job to be here today, uh -oh. I'd have just found another job. Oh, you know good what I'm saying? That's good I'd stuff. Found another job. Yes, but to the family, you all already know I love y'all. Y'all yes. love me. I love Vince, man. And I'm hurt. Yes. And I know it's hurt. Yes. But guess what? He's in a better place. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And um, yes, I'm just thank God for everybody showing up for my brother today. We we appreciate you all. And to the family, my prayers are with you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Hello, everybody. Hey. My name is Sayonique. I work for Elder Plus with Mr. Vince. Uh, he called me his grandbaby. He knew us super close. Funny, funny guy. A friend that brought me closer to God and always was an open ear. Always brought me laughing and believed me when I didn't myself, especially when I was in nursing school. He always encouraged me to pass all my tests, and I did just because he believed me. So he always threw in a joke when I didn't believe in myself, and when things were overwhelming. So I appreciate Mr. Vance and the time I spent with him. I spent one day in the hospital with him when he told me he was going to fight to the end, and he did. So not happy to say that Mr. Vance is gone, but He's not really with me in spirit. So, thank you. Bless you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Corey Robinson. I'm his cousin. I'm going to share with you a personal memory of Vince. Matter of fact, it's a personal memory of Vince and my cousin Alex's brother. One day, I turned 13. I turned 13 years old. And I'm working down on the Park Heights store, 3601 Park Heights Avenue, Robinson Grocery. Door closes. My cousin say, oh, you just turned 13. I'm like, yeah, you know, expecting, you know, hugs and kisses and what have you. Mm. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> that didn't happen. First thing they told me, like, you're 13, you're now a man. Um, so you better start taking punches like a man. <laughs> so they proceed to <laughs> baptize me. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and if you know Vince, he had the hands. And if you know my cousin Alex, he wrestled at that time. I'm going to put you in an arm like I'm going to put you in a double chicken wing, a si single chicken wing. <laughs> Baptism by fire. But I know it was all love. All love. Um, I remember that for the rest of my life. Yes, sir. Love that man. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Good morning, church. Good my, morning. Name is, my name is Anthony. I'm the oldest of my brothers and sisters. And I sat there for a while not thinking what I was going to say, but every gentleman that came up before me, I realized that I got those same lessons as a kid. 
I got a group of uncles as a kid that I thought that I hated. But every characteristic that I have today wow. is because of all of wow. those uncles. I'm talking about the strength, the pain, the struggle. We came from pretty much the bottom. And I feel like I tell everybody this story. A success story is coming from East Baltimore through all the crime to rise to be here today to tell a story. Tell a story. So I thank all of my uncles. And they're very, very close to me, and I love them. Bless you. Amen. 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 After this young lady, Calvert Porter, Dr. Calvert Porter is going to come uh, and have a few words as well. And he will be the last. Hi, Dad. Um, it's plenty of memories. Um, I know my father was an addict, and um, the problem was is that no matter what he did, he always seen me. <laughs> um, when I told him I was pregnant with my first son, Isaiah, he made it his business to go get help. And from that day on, he was clean for 20-something years. Yeah. Um, when he got sick, we had an issue because they was trying to give him medicine that he didn't want to lapse on in the hospital. Yeah. And, um, I told my father, I said, well, take what you can, but don't worry about lapsing. We here to God, we got you. We're not going to let nothing happened to you. Um, he was adamant about it, so he didn't take it anyway. Um, I was there with him when he got his last breath, when he went into a seed. I can't get no damages out of my head. I was also contracting with my newborn. Um, my mom, she said that my son came out looking like my father. <laughs> I don't see it, but I see it. Um, I don't know. There's just so many memories yeah. that I don't have time to keep them all, but at the same time, I wish I could just see him one more time before they cremated him so I could tell him I love him. I appreciate everybody coming. The people that he worked with, that, you know, his job was his pride. He had worked seven days and seven nights if he had to. <laughs> it got to a point I was kind of upset because he made it seem like, thank you. He has nothing else to do but work, even through his hurt. And he, like he said, if he stopped working, he felt that the disease was gonna take him. So he just worked until he couldn't. He didn't want to tell too many people because he felt that, you know, some people wanted his his position. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's funny. <laughs> and he I guess he had the best slot, I'm not sure, but he yeah, he didn't, he was like, no, we're gonna let them, we're not gonna let them tell him nothing. <laughs> so at the end of it all, I know I'm glad a lot of people came and showed their love for him. Um, my mom, thank you, my sisters, my brothers, um, my niece, my grandma. Um, like I said, we we was a rider for him. I, I wasn't there like I wanted to be, but at the same time. It was too much going on during his nine months of pregnancy. So me losing my grandfather, his father, three months later losing my father. Yeah. So it's just, it was a lot. But I know he wanted to uh, to be there for my grandpa, for his grandson's birth. 
And um, like I told I told everyone, he's there, you know. And I appreciate you, Mom. I appreciate you, Mom, for like being there for me. I love you, Kay. Yes. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody uh, who wanted to say something and who did say something. Uh, we thank you. Uh, but there's nothing like the ministry of presence. Uh, so we're glad that you're here. We're glad that you showed up. Uh, when the family looks around uh, and sees all of the people that love uh, events, it, it does their heart well. Um, and, and I gave her more than two minutes because that's the daughter. Calvert, you got two minutes. Sure that if Vince was here, he would say his favorite words. Is this what we're doing? 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 <laughs> what we're doing? <laughs> My name is Calvert. Uh, I work with Vince. We uh, we were very close. Um, those hours through the nights, those 24-hour days, mm. seven days a week, I was with him. He was, and so, uh, but it, it, it was an, it was a good time because we were like comrades holding each other up all the time. When I was asleep, he was awoke. When he was, he was asleep, I was awoke. Wow. So, wow. So, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but anyway, anywho, uh, I'm certainly going to miss him. I'm going to miss the, the calls at 4.30 in the morning where he just needed to talk. Um, this, this brother was a brother that was saved to serve. And, he, and if, that, if anything I could describe, he was a person that served. And, uh, and he did it with a, a joyful heart. I, I, uh, time does not allow me to go into no, any personal not. reflection. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to say this. I just, I just, there, there's a saying that, I, that I, I oftentimes share with people. And, this, and it goes like this. It says, when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ and he begins to show me his plan for my life, the plan as it might have been had he had his way, and I will see how I blocked him here, and I checked him there. And I would not yield my will. Will there be grief in my Savior's eyes? Grief, though he loves me still. He would have me rich, but I stand there poor, stripped of all but his grace. While memories run like a hundred things down the path that I cannot retrace. And then my desolate heart will well not break with the tears I cannot shed. I will hide my face in my empty hand. I will bow my uncrowned head. Lord of the years that are left for me, I place them into thy hands. Take me, break me into the pattern thou hast planned. I'm saying that because we only have one life. Yeah. Only one life. Right. And just like Vince, let God use you to the maximum of your potential. Amen. 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 Bless you, sir. Appreciate that. If you are here from Johns Hopkins Hospital and, and especially Hopkins Elder Plus, would you stand up, please? These are the people that he worked with every day and he loved to come to work. Uh, he enjoyed his job, and as a matter of fact, he, he did more work than, than Calvert did because he was asleep all the time. <laughs> this is what we're doing. <laughs> so we do have a presentation we're going to give to the family um, right now from Hopkins Elder Plus. We, we just want to say thank you for lending them to us. Thank you for letting us work with him. He was absolutely a joy. Uh, when he told me that he had, he had stage four, I looked at him and I said, why are you telling me this? He said, because I want you to say the words over me. I said, you already planning it? I said, what kind of time you got? He said, they said six to 12 months. He was gone in less than a month after that. You don't know how long you have. But I told him, you know how long you got. You got a benefit nobody else has. 
Now you can correct all those things that you've been holding. You can go find somebody you ain't spoke to in, in 15, 20 years and say, you know what? I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm saying that right now because I know somebody out there hasn't seen nor spoken to a family member in a long time. Time is short. Here today, gone tomorrow. Thank you, Hopkins Elder Plus. Thank you, Hopkins. We have acknowledgments and obituary. Uh, Ms. Colleen Winston, if she would come right here and read that for us. It is unfair for us to ask the family to write down in the words all of the things that been, or that their family member meant to them. They did an excellent job just, just piecing stuff together that we might get a glimpse of how great this man was. No sympathy is deep enough, no words are caring enough to take away sorrow. Please know that you are and will continue to be in so many thoughts and prayers. In sympathy, Cousin Jackie. This is a fragile time, a time to be gentle with yourself and to give your heart permission to grieve, to feel, to remember. Strength and hope will come again, but for now, do what you need to, on, to honor this sorrow, letting your heart and spirit heal. Thinking of you, Moderna, I hope I'm saying this right, Madeira, um, I'm going to miss you, Vince. I'm going to miss you, Vince. <laughs> Myra, miss you so much. Uh, I can't tell what that is. J Jayla? Or I can't tell what that is. J. New Christian Memorial Church, Pastor Elliot J. Rice. Dear family, New Christian Memorial Church extends its deepest sympathy to you on the loss of your loved one, Brother Vince Wilson. During your grieving season, we recommend you to the capable hands of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God and the caring love and thoughts from others help you to get through your sorrow. May you find rest and comfort in the love and hope of God as you mourn your loss. We encourage you, family and friends, with these words of comfort from John 14, verse 1 through 4. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you, go, you know. May you find comfort in these words, memories, and strength in each other's, in each other's love during your grieving season. If there's anything you need, Please do not hesitate to re reach out to the church family for support. We are here for you emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Warm sympathies. Elliot J. Rice, senior pastor. New Shalom Church. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be Comforted, Matthew 5, 4. Shalom Church, City of Peace, Florissant, Florissant, 
Missouri, to Timothy, Aretha, Darius, and Precious McFall, and to your entire family in the passing of your loved one, Mr. Vince Wilson. Please accept our heartfelt sympathy. It is our prayer that the peace of God be yours during this time. We know that there is a physical void when a family loses a loved one. However, through God's precious gift of memory, your loved one will forever live in each of your hearts. As we continue to pray for you, we recommend your hearts to, to Jesus and offer you the promise that he offers each of us, that he will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord is a very present help in the time of need. Lovingly submitted by the entire Shalom Church family, Carolyn Wilson, Congregation Administrator, Reverend Dr. Freddie J. Clark, Pastor. Celebration of a life well lived. Vince Courtney Wilson, July 8, 1963 to January 20, 2023. Life Reflections. Vince Courtney Wilson was born July 8, 1963 to the late Alexander Hamilton Wilson and Corrine Rose McFall in Baltimore, Maryland. He passed peacefully at the home of his favorite cousin and confidant, Cheryl Daly, on January 20th, 2023. He lost his short-lived battle with cancer. Vince will be remembered most for his daily early morning texts and emojis, love for his family and his small circle of friends. For those who belong to his small circle, time ran out way too fast. He had plans to fly on a plane with his brothers just to hang out, see his new grandson, Kingston, come into the world, shop and put together an outfit for he and Mark, or he and Alex, for $50. He, he loved to joke about being the only brother left with hair. He is, in, he is preceded in death by his sisters, Tanga and Charmaine. He is survived by his daughter, Erica Wilson, grandsons, Isaiah and Kingston, sisters, Edie and Colleen, and brothers, Timothy, Aretha, Alex and Brian, aunts, Alfreda and Gloria, and a host of nieces and nephews and other relatives and friends. We don't think of you as gone. Your journey has just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. We're at peace knowing you are resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place where there is no more pain or fear. We think how, we think how you must be wishing that we all could know today how nothing but our sadness can really pass away and know that you are living in all the hearts of those lives, all the hearts you, hearts to your lives and you touched. For nothing loved is ever lost and you know you were loved so much. Authors unknown. Acknowledgement, your family gratefully acknowledges the many kind and beautiful expressions of love shown during its, its hour of bereavement. Bless you. Bless you. Come on, put your hands together and thank the Lord. God has been so good to us. I've had some good days. 
I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. Oh, and some sleepless nights. But when I, when I look around, and think things over all of my good days I weigh my bad days and I I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see see the road and I ask the question Lord why why so much pain but he knows what's best for me although my weary eyes they can't see so I'll just say thank you Lord Thank you, Lord, I won't complain. Cause God been good to me. I wish I had a witness out there. He been good to me. Better than you or this whole world could ever be. He's been so good to me, 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 me. me. He dried all of my tears away, turned my midnights into day. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. I, I know that wasn't the song that was written out, but I, I felt somebody getting ready to complain, getting ready to be upset about something. And, and I stopped by to tell somebody, now listen, don't complain. You've had good days. You've had bad days. You've had hills to climb. But your good days, and, and, and you got to be honest in this, your good days outweigh your bad days and say there's no right, no reason at all to complain. If you have your Bibles with you, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to walk right into this. I'm going to walk right into this eulogy. Walk right into this. He told me, he told me, he said, because I want you to say the good words over me. I said, Vince, you better give me some good words to say. You got your Bibles, we're going to turn to Mark chapter 4. One verse, verse 41. I know Ecclesiastes was tough, but Mark, you should probably be able to get to. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The 41st verse of the fourth chapter of Gospel according to St. Mark says this, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? For a few moments, that is mine to spend. I want to preach from a subject, what I've learned from Clark Kent. What I've learned from Clark Kent. Come on, let's pray. Dear Lord, help me to help you help somebody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What I've learned from Clark Kent. I am what you call a fanatic. A fanatic is a person filled with excessive 
and single-minded zeal, especially for an extreme religious or political cause. However, I'm not that kind of fan. I'm a fan of comic books. Those who have spent any time with me know that I'm a, I have a passion for superheroes and comic books. Vince Courtney Wilson, I'm just getting used to Courtney, <laughs> was one such person, so much so that on my birthday, January the 6th, Vince and another friend of mine pooled their finances to buy me this Invictus watch. And it has the flash on it. I ain't nobody listening to me. OK, hold on. <laughs> flash is my all-time superhero. And, and he knew that because he was close to me. When I would walk, matter of fact, I remember meeting him on, uh, he interviewed. When he interviewed with me, and I, and I serve as his supervisor, he interviewed with me, I said, I, I'm not hiring you. I told him that, right? To, I'm not hiring you. You can't even turn your neck. <laughs> now, y'all might think that's strange over here, but everybody over here said, yeah, he said that. <laughs> and I talked to Myra, and Myra said, oh, no, he's a real good guy. This guy right here, he's going to work hard. I said, all right, Myra, I'm going to blame him on you. <laughs> so I've been blaming Myra for, for Vince, and he has showed up every day. We work four tens. Well, they work four tens. And you get a day off. Vince never took. He worked his day off. Then he went over across the street and worked over there. Uh, and him and Calvert was like two peas in a pod. I didn't know how they was doing it, but now I know. <laughs> I don't know how he going to make it now. <laughs> watch. Hey, wake up, wake up. Hey. And in, in the Flash origin story, uh, uh, it tells uh, of a man called uh, Barry Allen who got struck by a lightning. Uh, and, uh, and he mixed his, the lightning with a whole bunch of other chemicals. And when he woke up, he had the ability to run fast and, and had a great metabolism. His, his name was Barry Allen, but he, it changed. The lightning changed him into the Flash. Yeah, don't look at me strange. Y'all know, some of y'all know this. Uh, or maybe you, you know Peter Parker, who got bit by a radioactive spider. A and then that spider made him have the attributes of an arachnoid or a spider, and he was able to stick to walls. You know Spider-Man. You know Spider-Man, Spider-Man. <laughs> does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size. Can't you see? Just like wise. Look out. Am I the only one who know that song? You say you're the only one who know the whole words. <laughs> then uh, one of my favorite also is, is Superman. But Superman is different from every other hero because Superman was born Superman. Nothing happened to him except he came to Earth. He was already Superman. His costume was Clark Kent. Ain't nobody, now y'all gonna think about this right now. Y'all gonna, somebody think, hey, wait a minute, he, didn't, he wasn't Clark Kent who became Superman. He was Superman who became Clark Kent. How come I'm the only one excited about this, right? <laughs> Clark Kent is his disguise so that people think he is like everybody else. But of course, he's not because he's Superman. And I learned something about Vince that reminds me of this guy, Clark Kent. See, he dressed like Vince so that everybody would know he was Superman. Oh, now, now, now you go. There you, you better talk to me. I, I preach longer when folk don't talk back to me. 
So if you got somewhere to go, you might want to say amen every once in a while. First thing I've noticed about Clark Kent or Vince is that he had uh, a, the strength of Superman. Well, what you mean, preacher? Uh, Superman, we see Vince Wilson understand himself and his power through his father. His father explains to him who he is. Somebody ain't listening. All right, watch this, watch this. On, back, back in October, Vince joined this church. He was sitting over there, and we was having family and friends day, and, and I was talking, and I noticed him sitting there, and I did. I stopped the sermon, and I said, hey, there go Vince. And at the end of the sermon, at the end of the sermon, he joined the church. And I said, wow, you joining the church? You Listen, when folk who know who you are still don't mind calling you pastor, ain't nobody, ain't nobody listening to me. Because, because when, when folk who you live with still respect you in a way to give you a high high, he used to call me boss. See, y'all, y'all, you see, this, this, this must be just for me. Hold on, here we go. He used to call me boss. I said, Vince, do not call me boss. Just call me EJ. Be no, okay, boss. <laughs> but what, what, I, what I do know, I, 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 the truth is, I don't know much about Vince's earthly father. But what I do know is that he had a heavenly father, and from his heavenly father, he gained something not everyone has. Clark, I, I mean Vince, had a father who cared enough about him to save him. A, a dad who cared what Vince's contributions was going to be here on earth. He said, I need you to plant a smile where you work. And that way when folks see you coming, they start smiling. I need you to shine up your gold so, so everybody know that when they see Vince coming, things are going to get shiny around here. He came to work, I said, every day. When he told me that he had stage four cancer, he said, don't tell nobody else. I ain't telling nobody but you in Vegas. Vegas is, is, is Cal because he spent a whole bunch of time in <laughs> Not only did, 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 did Vince remind me of, uh, of Superman or Clark Kent because he had strength, but he, it was intentional. Vince was intentional. Without intentionality, Superman is just a man who never realized or capitalized on his superhuman ability. But Vince knew the impact he would have. Vince understood that if I come and I smile and I laugh, my participants who I drive every day will smile and laugh and enjoy their day. He, even when he was feeling bad, even when he was feeling low, you never knew it. He wasn't like that, man, I can't stand it. He was never like, oh, man, I, I don't want to go to work. EJ, I don't want to work today. I'm calling out. FMLA. <laughs> y'all act like y'all don't know what FMLA is. I know every last one of y'all know somebody. And if you don't know somebody who has FMLA, it's you. <laughs> but he, is, he was intentional. And what makes him use those abilities for good instead of evil? Everything he had inside of him, he tried to use it for good. He wanted to make sure your day was easy. Every day I, I would send him, he would stand over on lunch. He would never take his lunch, but he would never mark no lunch. I said, Vince, you didn't work, you didn't eat, so you got to mark no lunch. No, boss, I got this, boss, no problem. Uh, uh, is the meds ready? Because he wanted to go over and get the meds. He wanted to go and get whoever was left over. He wanted to stay late and do, volunteered every day to stay late. If I couldn't get nobody to stay late, I said, Vincent, got you, boss. <laughs> he was planned. He made sure he was somebody you could count on. Not only did he have strength, not only did he have intentionality, but he also had enemies. 
there was, a, there was a man, his name was Lex Luthor, that, that always planned Superman's demise. He didn't know Superman was Clark Kent, or he didn't know Clark Kent was Superman, but he always planned his demise. And what he planned mostly is he would take something in his past, a, a kryptonite, and he would bring it close to Superman. And that would weaken him. I'm telling you, there's always, if you got a Superman, there's always some kryptonite. His daughter pointed on it a little bit, but uh, 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 that Vince always had something in his past that he didn't want to get close to again. Oh, y'all working with me here? Anybody, am I painting this picture right? Do you understand where I'm at on this? He thought, he said, I can't get close to kryptonite because I'll lose my strength. And he was smart enough to know, I need to stay away from this and get close to this. Not only, not only did he have enemies, not only was he a strength, not only was he had intentionality, but last, but definitely not least, he had humility. Uh, not many of us have this, not many of us have this humility in order to keep his powers a secret. Clark, I mean Vince, most consistently resists the urge to fight back when provoked. He was a peacekeeper. Whenever he got to the point where he had to be angry, he walked away. He wouldn't say stuff to you. He wouldn't talk to you. He would just walk away. And with his superior strength, he must humble himself to not cause others harm. So he would rather take the grunt of it rather than cause you harm. You getting upset. He just walk away. Most of the time when you're driving, when you're driving, we got a lot of idiots on the road. Oh, y'all act like y'all don't know how people drive in Baltimore City. And when you're driving a bus and it's got Johns Hopkins hospital on the side of it, folk are looking for a payday. They want to run you off, cut you off. I wish I had some drivers in here. <laughs> Vince would always blow his horn, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> One time he told me he got out of the van. I said, Vince, what was you going to do? He said, nothing. <laughs> then you should have stayed in the van. Well. I didn't want him to think I was going to do nothing. Y'all ain't paying. <laughs> I learned one more thing. And Vince taught me this too. I didn't know this at first, but then when as I start researching and reading the comic books, I learned that whenever the enemy got the best of him, whenever he did and he would go down and kryptonite or something from his past or somebody had got the best of him. He was down. Power was lost. And people could kill him when kryptonite was around. People would talk about him when kryptonite was around. People would walk away from him when kryptonite was around. He couldn't find no help, but he learned something, that, that, that his power came from the sun. His power came from the sun, and Superman knew, just like Vince knows, if I get closer to the sun. See, I'm letting that marinate just a little bit, because somebody working on my street here now. I, I, you're, I'm not talking about the yellow sun that we see up in the sky. No, I'm talking about the Son of God. And all he knew, that if I got closer to the sun, that I'd be all right. If I got closer to the sun, I could make it happen. If I got closer to the sun, I would get more strength. If I got closer to the sun, I would be able to say, somebody would be able to look at me and say, look, up in the sky, there's a bird, there's a plane. No, it's Superman. And I could hear Vince saying, boss, this looks like a job for Superman. Give me whatever you got, and I'll make sure that I do it the right way. 
All you got to do is get closer to the sun. Because if you get closer to the sun, the sun will get closer to you. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Looks like a job for Superman. Somebody out there looking, they saying, my God, did he buy a shirt <laughs> just to preach that sermon? No. The truth is, I wear this shirt every day. <laughs> every morning before my meeting, two of my friends would come into my office, and we just kind of talk about what we're going to do. I could depend on both of them to get the job done. If I needed somebody, if I needed to fuss at somebody, I would fuss at them. I would try not to fuss at everybody else. But I'd fuss at them because to whom much is given, much is, is required. God has given all of us something. And I'm going to ask you, just like Vince would ask you, don't waste what God has given you. He was my trainer. I would put Vince on the bus with all of the new drivers because he had the temperament to handle what was going on. The strength, somebody running over the curb. I said, you know that's a collision. What? There might be somebody out here who don't know the God that Vince knows. It might be. I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to assume everybody here is saved. But if that's you, if that's you and you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, and you say it to yourself, if I die today, I don't know where I'm going. You need to make a decision. And the decision is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You want to see Vince again? Get saved. He's waiting up in heaven. Because the Bible does say this, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Where did my mic go? Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Look at God, look at God just touching it, just touching it. Come on, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads right now and we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for the life and even the legacy of Vincent Courtney Wilson. We thank you for his friendship. We thank you for his fatherhood. We thank you for his family. We thank you for all of the things he's meant to everybody here. Thank you for putting them into our lives just for a little while and strengthening them enough to make a difference in every one of our lives. We thank you, Lord, because you've been good to us. Continue to bless this family. Continue to prop it up on every leaning side. Bless, bless daughter. Bless grandchildren. Bless cuz. Bless all the family that's assembled. Mend the broken hearts. Give strength to the weak. Build them up on every leaning side. Let them know that you are God. And besides you, there is no other. This is our prayer we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's children said amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the place. Because this is a memorial, and there is no body to be committed to the ground, this ends our celebration. But I did want to tell you this. Before you leave, if you want to honor Vince's life, if you want to remember him 
in a most prestigious way, I would ask you to do this. Live better. Somebody didn't hear that. Somebody didn't hear that because that, that was the shouting time. Listen, live better. All of the things that we are harboring, all of the things that we holding inside and we won't let it go for some reason or another, let it go. Live better. If you live better, you can get a shirt just like this. Come on, stand to your feet last time. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. He is able to present us faultless before the throne of God. Now, hence, and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, amen and amen. The family, if you would be seated, uh, they have a repast schedule for the family on the other side. All the friends and all the family that came and they have to leave right now. This is your time. We thank you so much for coming. Look, family, look over here. This, look on this side. Look in the back of you. These are all the people who love Vince. These are all the people who took time on a Saturday to come out and say we love you.